Good morning. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Our scripture for consideration this morning is Isaiah 55 verses 1 to 3. An invitation to the thirsty. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good and you will delight in the richest of fear. Give ear and come to me, listen that you may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, my faithful love promised to David. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we bow our heads before you in the precious name of Jesus, your Son and our Lord. We thank you for your word. We lift before you today, Lord, an empty cup, an empty vessel, and we pray that you would fill it with your spirit. We pray, Lord, that you would speak to our hearts today and that we would understand the word that you bring to us. We love your word. We believe that your word is truth. We also believe that your word that goes forth from your mouth shall not return to you empty, but shall achieve the purposes for which you sent it. So now we ask your blessing over our consideration of your word in Jesus' name. Amen. My beloved friends in the Lord, a fake, a knockoff is never as good as the real thing. Isn't that true? When you buy something, and especially if you're buying something that's cheap, it's always a good idea to make sure that it's authentic, that it's the real deal. Many of the big companies suffer great losses because of knockoffs, because of fakes, especially in sporting clothes and training shoes, handbags, and even perfumes. There are many, many knockoffs, many that are not the real deal. If you've ever had the real item, had the real perfume or had the real authentic handbag or the real authentic training shoes and you buy a knockoff, you can tell the difference straight away. Simply the quality is not there. As you know, I love to bake sourdough bread, all sorts of breads, but my main bread is sourdough. Sourdough requires quite a bit of patience, quite a lot of work, but it's worthwhile. There are many knockoffs. You can go to places and buy so-called sourdough bread, which is not authentic. It's not the real deal. Many people cheat. They try to speed up the process to produce more saving costs by adding things like vinegar to the dough to give it the sour taste. The sour taste comes from the slow fermentation process. So if you've ever eaten authentic sourdough and then you buy a knockoff, you know the difference straight away. I find that since I've been baking my own sourdough, nothing else really satisfies that much. And isn't it true of so many things? If you have experienced the real genuine, the real authentic, then when you come to a copy, a knockoff, it's not the same. It doesn't satisfy you anymore. And this principle applies in the realm of spirituality. It applies to our soul and our spirit. When you have met the real God, when you have met God the Father through the Lord Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, when you have met the triune God, nothing else will ever satisfy you again. People spend huge, vast amount of money and time and energy chasing after false gods, false religions, gods that cannot and will not satisfy. People are looking for something to fill that hole in the heart, to fill that void, 
to give them peace, to give them joy, to give them a sense of belonging, to give them a meaning for life. They pay huge amounts of money, spend lots of time on things that will never answer the questions and that will never ever satisfy. And what they don't realize is they can have it all for free. When you repent of your sins and you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, your days of searching are over. Your days of being dissatisfied, disillusioned are over. Once you have met the Lord Jesus Christ in faith, you are born again. You are never ever going to be the same. Your days of searching have ended. Jesus Christ satisfies every single need that we have, both physical and spiritual. True, authentic faith gives meaning to your life. It gives you peace. It gives you joy. It gives you hope. It fills your life with love. You have true life. Apart from Jesus, you can't have these things. You may get a little whiff here and there, a little sniff. But it's only when you have committed your life to the Lord Jesus Christ do you really understand what I'm talking about. You come out of the darkness of this sin-filled world into a kingdom of life and light, joy and peace in Christ Jesus our Lord. Our text today is one of many of those beautiful invitations from our Heavenly Father, where he invites us to come and to partake. In one of the Psalms, David says, taste and see that the Lord is good. God is inviting us to come to him because he will provide everything we need for a blessed life. It's an invitation to stop chasing after things that don't satisfy after things that are no good. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat, God says. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good and you will delight in the richest of fear. Give ear and come to me. Listen that you may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. My faithful love promised to David. God is inviting us to come, to partake, to receive. He's going to give us the best. He's saying, if you thirst, come to me. I will satisfy your thirst. If you're hungering after truth and righteousness, you will find it in me and it will cost you nothing. All other water is like salty water. You're thirsty, you drink it, you thirst even more. God's saying, why are you spending money on bread that will not satisfy? Why do you chase after other religions that cannot help you? Why do you use up your energy on all these fruitless activities that won't help? How much time, how much money is spent on religion that doesn't cut it. I would say billions and billions of dollars over the years. If the person would just stop and think for a moment, just think about it. A gold statue, an idol, how can that help you? Something carved out of wood, a temple, a man-made structure, how can that help you? A man-made religion, philosophy, how can that really help you? Think about it. Think about it. Some guru, some person, some prophet, some leader who's long dead. How can that help you? I love the way that it's described in Isaiah, where Isaiah talks about the futility of people. We read in chapter 44. The blacksmith takes a tool and works with it in the coals. He shapes an idol with hammers. He forges it with the might of his arm. He gets hungry and loses his strength. 
He drinks no water and grows faint. The carpenter measures with a line and makes an outline with a marker. He roughs it out with chisels and marks it with compasses. He shapes it in human form, human form and all its glory, that it may dwell in a shrine. He cuts down cedars, or perhaps took a cypress or oak. He let it grow among the trees of the forest, or planted a pine and the rain made it grow. It is used for fuel, for burning. Some of it he takes and warms himself. He kindles a fire and, breaks, and bakes bread. But he also fashions a god and worships it. He makes an idol and bows down to it. Half of the wood he burns in the fire. Over it he prepares his meal. He roasts his meat and eats his fill. He also warms himself and says, Ah, I am warm. I see the fire. From the rest he makes a god, his idol. He bows down to it and worships. He prays to it and says, Save me. You are my God. They know nothing. They understand nothing. Their eyes are plastered over so they cannot see. And their minds are closed so that they cannot understand. No one stops to think. No one has the knowledge or understanding to say. Half of it I used for fuel. I even baked bread over its coals. I roasted meat and I ate. Shall I make a detestable thing from what is left? Shall I bow down to a block of wood? Such a person feeds on ashes. A deluded heart misleads him. He cannot save himself or say, Is not this thing in my right hand a lie? And there, my friends, is the sad truth. So many people make idols. They don't see the futility, the stupidity of it. How can this thing made of wood or stone or gold, or silver, save you? It can't. People's eyes have been plastered over. They cannot see in order to be saved. There is only one who can save us. There is only one name by which we can be saved. There is only one who can rescue us from the power of sin, death and the devil. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. He came to earth as a man. He died on the cross. He paid our sin debt in full with his blood, his precious blood, so that we could freely be forgiven. For God so loved the world, for God so loved you, that he gave his only begotten son, so that whosoever believes on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Out of his tremendous love, and his tremendous grace. Jesus suffered my punishment, your punishment, so that whoever calls upon him may be saved. Freely he gives us eternal life. Freely he forgives our sins. All we need to do is to receive from him in faith continuation of our text today seek the Lord while he may be found call on him while he is near let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts let them turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on them and to our God he will freely pardon he will freely pardon Seek the Lord while he may be found. This suggests to us that there is a time when he won't be able to be found anymore. Theologians call this grace, this era that we live in, the time of grace, or the dispensation of grace. At the moment, anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ will be saved, no matter who they are. But this era, this time will end, maybe very soon. And a time of judgment will come upon the earth and things will be very different. That means now. Now is the time. If you have not yet called upon the name of the Lord, if you have not yet born again, if you have not had your sins washed away with the blood of Jesus, do it now. Do it now. Tomorrow may be too late. Tomorrow may be too late. One day the curtain will come down on time and it will be too late. It is important that we have a right relationship with God now. 
The other thing is not only the curtain may come down on the world, the curtain may come down on your life. You don't know if you're going to live out the next minute, the next day. You don't know that. So don't put it off. Because if you die without Christ, you will spend a dark eternity. You will be in hell. A place of total darkness, of no hope. Total loneliness, despair, with no end. I don't want that for anybody. You can have a place in eternal light, in beautiful fellowship with God and all his children, forever and ever in heaven. The choice is yours. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, be saved, reject him, be lost forever. Understand, our God is a God of grace, love and mercy. He invites you to come to receive. But if you reject his invitation, it's not his fault, it's yours. He said, the one who comes to me, I will in no wise reject. He will never turn us away if we come genuinely to him. But we need to do it before we head out of this life. Because once we leave this body, it's too late to change. The invitation is very simple. Come to him, receive, taste and see that he is good. Receive and then you can say with David, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Turn to him, repent, he will receive you. If you have in some way drifted away, become lukewarm or cool in your relationship to the Lord Jesus Christ, come to him today. Come, drink freely of the water of life. Be refreshed, be renewed, be strengthened. He loves you. He's waiting for you to come to him. He freely gives. Don't pass by this opportunity. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we bow our heads before you in the precious name of Jesus, your Son and our Lord. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your grace, which is new every morning. We thank you that you love us with an everlasting love. Lord, help us to respond to your love today. I pray for that soul that may be listening, that has not yet repented of their sins and received forgiveness that this would be the moment. This would be the moment. Lord Jesus, you so loved us, you died on the cross, you shed your blood to wash us clean from all of our sins. We thank you for your gift. We receive it in faith. Fill us in you with your Holy Spirit, Lord. Help us to walk in your truth. For those of us who may have become somewhat lukewarm or cool in our relationship with you, we return to you today. We come to the well and we drink freely of the water of life. Pray, pour out your spirit upon us, renew us, refresh us, strengthen us, empower us. Lord, may your love flow in and through us. We commit our lives to you. We offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to you. Lord, help us not to follow the ways of the world, not to be worldly in our thinking, but to seek first the kingdom of God and your righteousness, knowing that everything else will be added unto us. We pray for the church. We pray that she would get her act together that you would cleanse, renew her, begin in my heart, begin in our church. Lord, have mercy. We look out at a dying world, a world full of war and strife and conflict. We pray, Lord, have mercy over the Ukraine. Lord, we pray that you would turn the enemy back, that you would defeat his plans, that you would change their ways, Lord, have mercy. We pray for those who are suffering so very, very much. Lord, have mercy. We pray for those who are dying, for those who are starving, those who have nothing. Lord, have mercy. Father, there's so many things we don't understand, but we do know that you work all things together for good to those who love you. And so we want to be on that side of the ledger. We love you and we know that whatever happens in our life, you're working it together for our good. We know the day will come when we will walk into your kingdom by your grace and we will say, yes, all is well, all was well and all 
will always be well. Till that time, Lord, may we not waver in our faith. We pray, Lord, for the sick and the dying and all who are in need. We pray for our governments. We pray in these very difficult and dangerous times that you would give them um, understanding and wisdom to perform their duties, to be honest, to make good and right decisions. Lord, have mercy. There's so many things we would lift before you today in prayer, but we just want to combine them all by praying from the heart, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us at this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. If you would like to join with me in the time of confession and Holy Communion, then please continue to watch this recording. After the blessing, the next part will be Holy Communion. Prepare some bread, some wine or fruit juice, and we'll celebrate the Lord's Supper together. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. The Bible tells us that if we say we have no sin, then we are lying. But if we confess our sins, then God is just and able to forgive us our sins. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves. The truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So today, before we partake of Holy Communion, let's bow our heads in prayer and confess our sins to God. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we believe that you are holy and just and right. And we realize that we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed. And that we fall short of the mark. We also realize that there is nothing that we can do to atone for our sins. We realize that the wages of sin is death. But we also realize that you so loved the world and loved each one of us. That you gave your son Jesus to die on the cross to shed his blood. And that he paid our sin debt in full. And that if we confess our sins and believe on Jesus, we are cleansed from our sin. So Lord, we confess to you our sins. And we ask that you would forgive us, that you would wash us clean in the precious and holy blood of Jesus, your Son and our Lord. We believe that Jesus' blood has paid our sin debt in full. And we thank you. That through Jesus, our debt is paid and our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. We ask that you would empower us by your Holy Spirit to live a holy life set apart for you. We repent of our sins and we receive your forgiveness in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. My friends, if this has been a true confession, and you agree with me and say, Amen. Amen. As a called and ordained servant of the word, I announce to you the grace of God, the forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus said, be of good cheer, your sins are forgiven. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, he took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, take and eat. 
This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after the supper. He gave thanks. Then he said, take and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Inasmuch as you eat the bread and drink the cup, proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Now take and eat. This is the body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you. Take and drink. It's the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Now may the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, his holy precious blood, strengthen, preserve you in body and soul to life eternal. Go now in his peace. Amen. Jesus said, do not fear, for I am with you. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Remain always in my love. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you that even though remotely we are together and we were able to partake of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in bread and wine. We do this in remembrance of our precious Lord. And we pray that this would now strengthen us as we go forth into the week. May we always rejoice in you and walk with you. Thank you that you are with us always to the close of the age. Now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let's go now in his peace. Amen. God be with you until we meet again.